All of the things which are going on in this world today, uh, from 9-11, all of the wars in the Middle East, all of the, um, the incredible bloodshed that's being uh, spilled all over the earth, can be traced back to, and you might want to remember what I'm saying here, because you, I'm, I'm sure you're not going to make the connection when I first tell you, but I'm going to try and explain it to you. The things which are happening today, all of this stuff can be traced back to the planet Saturn. Saturn is a very, very pivotal, important concept in theology and religion. And most people have never been told any of this and have no knowledge of it at all. But the planet Saturn is very important in world affairs, in theology. In the Islamic belief, the holy city of Mecca, which is in Saudi Arabia. Mecca has a Masonic circle, and within the Masonic circle is a square. Because you've got to do everything on the square, remember. You have a town square, you have New York Square, you have uh, a Vatican Square, you have a Red Square, you have uh, all kinds of squares. Why? Because this is Masonic. And it goes all the way back into the ancient world. The terms and symbols is called the Black Square, it's called the Dark Sun, the Black Sun. This is what the Nazis and the SS and the Gestapo wore black. That's why uh, priests wear black. That's why judges wear black robes. Why do you think a judge wears a black robe? He wears a black robe because when you used to graduate from university, you wear a black robe. Why black robes? Darth Vader wears a black robe. What the hell does a black robe have to do with anything? The judges wear black robes. You know, Supreme Court judges wear black robes. Black robes represent the priesthood of the planet Saturn the Saturnalian Brotherhood. All you need to do is study Nazism and you will begin to see that the powers behind the Nazi party, the Thule Society, the Germanian Order, were all members of something called the Saturnalian Brotherhood, the Brotherhood of Saturn. Saturn was the god of darkness, chaos, and destruction. He teaches you a lesson. He will take your life if you don't listen to him. So consequently, Saturn was very, very important in the ancient world. Saturn's name, incidentally, in the old Phoenician ancient Canaanite religion um, in the Middle East, the old Phoenician Canaanite worship of the planet Saturn was the most important god of all the ancient world was the planet Saturn and his symbol long before the Hebrews were ever in Cana. The symbol in Cana for the planet Saturn was a six-pointed star. Today we call that today we call that star the star of, of David. There was no star of David. It's the star of Saturn. All of the Jewish reference books, all the Encyclopedia Judica, all of uh, you go to the synagogue, uh, go up into uh, Mulholland Drive, up to the Jewish University, and spend three weeks there and look up Saturn. You'll find out. That 98% of all Judaism is a worship of the planet Saturn. Better wake up and understand where this stuff comes from. Because if there is a God in heaven, if there is a divine presence in the universe that demands righteousness and justice, then you're going to have to rethink what we believe and where we're going and what the world is all about. Because for the last 2,000 years, we haven't done too well. Logic alone should tell you that when Jews were being marched into concentration camps, uh, they were praying out, they were praying obviously to their God for protection and for help. There was no help coming. Christians have been praying to God to help this nation, to, to protect their family, and evil grows and multiplies each day. And the more Christians pray, the more evil the, the pervasiveness becomes. And the reason why is because we are not in tune with the universal God force. We're not in tune with the truth. We're in tune with what we've been told is the truth. We understand the thing that we've been told about government, that we have to pay your taxes, because that's the law. 
You think, what law? Where is there a law that says that? Well, it's in there somewhere. No. Where is the law? And then you find out, well, it was just a lie. The whole thing was a lie. The whole thing is a sham. Saturn was referred to, as I said, its symbol was the six-pointed star. Today we call it the Star of David. Um, Saturn was referred to as El. E-L. El was the god Saturn in the old Phoenician Canaanite system. And consequently, anyone that promoted the worship of El is where we get the word elder. You become an elder because you are worshiping El. And when you worship El and become an elder, then uh, you, uh, how did you get to be an elder? You've got El elected. So therefore we have El elections. <coughs> Now that you have been elected to be an elder, now you are one of the elites. Now you have moved up like in an elevator. You are now moved up in society. Consequently, it's all money. It's all manipulation and exploitation coming out of Phoenicia, Cana. It goes back to the old Sumerian Babylonian systems of words and terms and symbols and emblems that have been used to manipulate the whole human race. Because our masters don't give a damn about you or your family or, or your destiny with God. All they care about is what they have always cared about and that's controlling the whole damn world. Somewhere along the line we're going to discover we've been had. If we haven't already figured it out. I want to show you how the planet Saturn, the Saturnalian Brotherhood, the worship of the planet Saturn, <coughs> Saturn's color was black. The black, uh, all each one of the gods and each one of the planets were associated with a different color. Green was associated with Venus, and that's why today in Islamic countries today you will see all of their flags and halotry in, in Islamic world are in green. And you'll see the crescent with the star. Many people think the crescent is the crescent of the moon, but it is not. According to the actual research documents, <coughs> the crescent on the Islamic flags is the crescent of the planet Venus. And the star represents Venus. It is a religion that is based on the worship of Venus, but which has incorporated the Saturnalian philosophy in it. So, like all the other religions, it is also a very eclectic religion. <coughs> uh, we hear that God's name is the Yahweh. Let me tell you something about Yahweh. I mean, I've spent 42 years looking at this stuff, and as far as I'm concerned, I'm amazed at how many people don't even begin to know what these words mean. Yahweh is not the name of God. Yahweh in Hebrew is an expressive term. It's expressing something. It's uh, describing something. It's not, a, it's not a formal name of God. Yahweh in Hebrew simply means, and the best way to explain what the word means, is to take a garden hose and twist hold of the, the, the end of it, turn on the water, and you feel the pressure building up. When you release the hose, it's a release of pressure. It's a release of energy. In the Hebrew, in the ancient Hebrew, the release of dynamic energy was called Yahweh. And it was always associated with sex. It's the building up of the sexual urge and the releasing of sex in the sex act was referred to in the ancient Phoenician Canaanite system as being one with Yahweh. The explosion of divine creativity. That's why our Jewish physicists have told us the universe came into existence by a big bang. Another flash of light in the window You will hear Looking down upon the sky Am I the only one that will need you Over me
me, have you ever wondered why we call God the Father? You ever thought about that? I mean, women, uh, some of the women's lepers were saying it could be of God the Mother. I don't know. But the point being is that why do we call God the Father? It's because of rain. Rain is why we call God the Father. And consequently, the idea was that the earth was our mother, mother nature, mother earth. And mother nature gets impregnated with God's the Father's sacred fluid that comes and falls on the earth and impregnates mother nature because everything grows. And so once a year, there was a celebration in Phoenicia, Cana when the spring rains would come. And consequently, the, the Phoenician Canaanites knew that the rains were coming and it was going to bring a whole new life to the earth. So consequently, they had, a, they had a celebration of spring and it was called the Marriage Feast of Cana. The Marriage Feast of Cana. And this is in the Bible. As I said, that there are many things in the scriptures that are hidden right in front of you. If you don't know what they mean, you don't know where they came from, You'd be surprised when you begin to look at where these stories come from. The whole idea of the marriage feast of Cana was Mother Earth, Mother Nature, asked God's Son, our risen Savior, and of course the Son is your risen Savior. As a matter of fact, if it don't come up, we're dead. So consequently, the Son was our risen Savior, and, and so Mother Earth asked God's Son to draw water. The water is drawn by the Son, so it can grow, it can fall on the grapes, and the grapes can be made into wine, so it changes water into wine. And this is, goes back to the old ancient Phoenician Canaanite, and even the Jewish rabbis will tell you that. Consequently, there are symbols and ideas and concepts in government which are put there purposely to mislead, uh, mislead you. There are symbols and ideas in, in, in all of our systems purposely to mislead you, and I'm saying that even the theological basis for what we think we're doing has also been misled, and until such time as we get it right, we're never going to have that divine protection that the universe offers you when you're doing it right. The ancient Phoenician Canaanites said that the women should listen to their god Saffron. They always knew Saffron had rings. So they said the women should listen to their gods. So women were, women were to wear ear rings. Men were to get married before their gods, so they were to wear a wedding ring. Kings were to get a uh, crown before their gods, so consequently they would have a round crown, the corona. The ring, Saka, is the god of this world. From that we get the dark side of the horse, Darth Vader, Remember Darth Vader with his Nazi helmet speaking to the Masonic Triangle? Somebody better do their homework. This stuff is fascinating when you get into it. Our international banking cartels, which control, finance, and organize and direct all of this corruption, wars, and bloodshed, we're all well aware of that, but most people don't know that international banking cartels go back to the Vatican. The Vatican as far back as the 5th, 6th, and 7th century was the power of Europe. The Vatican dominated Europe and Europe dominated the world. Even the Uniform Commercial Code, the international banking codes of the world are based on Vatican canon law. I mean, that's why when you walk into a courtroom, why do you have to go to court? Does anybody ever wonder why you go to court? I mean, you play basketball on a court. You play tennis on a court. The whole idea in a court is to put the ball back in the other guy's court. That's right, it's just a game. Back and forth, they're throwing the ball back at each other, and the judge is there wearing a black robe. Black because of the planet Saturn. Saturn was the god of banking. That's why the, the judge sits on the, on the bench. Look it up. Look up the word bench. You will find the word bench is a Latin word for a bank. So the judge rules for the bank. He don't care who's going to win or lose. Somebody's going to pay. And he's going to get paid. What does he care? Okay? So consequently, the judge rules for the bank, he sits on the bench. The whole idea is you're in court to play ball back on the court. How do you play, how do you play uh, tennis on a court? You play with a racket. Why? Because the whole thing is a racket. They're using terms and symbols and emblems. And they're playing on you. You know, a lot of people think, well, these are just play on words. Don't bet on it. 
We have something called the California criminal justice system. Criminal justice, not American justice system, not the people's justice system. It is a California criminal justice system. You think that's by chance? Think about it. You think that the government makes mistakes? The only mistake is that you're thinking that they're making mistakes. These guys know what they're doing. When they say criminal justice, they know what they're talking about. The criminals are in charge of the justice. That's why it's a criminal justice system. Okay? The Knights Templars who set up your international banking cartels in the 12th, 13th, and 14th century are the same people that gave you educational institutions, colleges. Where do we get the word college? College comes from the collegia, the Latin Roman college of cardinals. I mean, I could go on for hours just giving you examples. I mean, when you graduate, you come out with a square mortar board, a black square mortar board. What's all that about? Black square mortar boards. It has to do with the planet Saturn.